everybody. I'm going to give you a little tutorial video today on how to use an ebo in the piano. Um, and this is particularly a useful video if you're performing one of my two pieces that uses this technique, either Sparrow Lucem for piano quartet or Rising Tide for mixed ensemble. Oh, and hi, I'm Nina, the person on the other side of the camera. So what we're gonna start to do is talk about these um, Ebos. There are different brands, but this one is my particularly preferred one just because I know that it works. Um, and so in each one of these boxes comes one of these um, electronic bows. They're typically used for guitars, um, but you can use them on some string instruments as well with uh, metallic strings. Um, and so what they are is an electromagnet that will be resonating the string without having to actually activate it with the keys of the piano. The Ebo consists of um, a nine volt battery inside, which you can see here. It's quite smart to replace these right before performance. You can close that up um, and then you'll see there's a back side and a front side, or at least that's how I refer to them. Um, and on the bottom, you'll see these rails. The actual electromagnetic mechanism lives here. So when you're hovering the Evo over a string, you want to make sure that the strings that you're activating lie within this area um, and that the rails are touching outer strings that you don't care about, otherwise it's not going to work. Also, if the string presses against the unit, um, you're going to deter the actual activation of the resonance of the string and end up with a rattling sound, right? It's kind of like magic, so you can activate the string from afar. The Ebo has a button that allows it to be activated. So when the button is in the middle mode, the unit is off and won't do anything. So if I go and put it in the piano, we won't hear any kind of activation. However, um, we can activate it by turning the Ebo on, which is the button to the left. Um, you'll notice a blue light turns on on this particular model once you do so. Um, and this is standard mode and the button to the right is harmonic mode, so it will play an octave higher. This doesn't really work the harmonic mode very well on pianos. It's a better effect when you're using um, electric guitar. But uh, so for the purposes of um, the techniques used in my piece, make sure the button is always to the left in standard mode. And then you can place the Ebo hovering along the string and making sure that the sustain pedal is depressed so that the dampers are lifted, you will begin to hear a resonance happen. Um, now, if I take the pedal off, there is no sound. Why? Because the string is being dampened. As soon as I press the pedal down, lifting the hammers, then you will end up with a sound. The sound will grow slowly over time. Because all pianos are different, you're going to have to probably experiment on where the Ebo resonates the best on your piano. This particular instrument is a little small, so uh, there's a greater chance that it'll work wherever I put it. Um, but you'll notice some timbre and resonance changes as you move the Ebo along the strings. So when you get to your rehearsal piano or your concert piano, just make sure you have an idea of where the ranges are in which the Ebo is most active. Now, when performing with Ebo, once the performance starts, you can just keep the Ebo on because if I remove the Ebo, it will eventually decay over time. If I want to actually kill the sound, all I have to do is take off the sustain pedal and then the dampers take care of the resonance. I can put the Ebo back on the string, hear another note, and we'll hear it build up over time. If you want to activate the Ebo more quickly, because on some pianos it takes a bit of a while to speak after the uh, sustain pedal is held down, note that this is not the case in this particular instrument, you can put down the sustain pedal and then play a note, and you'll notice that it activates rather quickly. Once again, Ebo is on in position, sustain pedal down, and activating the E. Then if I remove the pedal, the Ebo goes away. Or if I take the Ebo off, the sound will decay naturally over time.
over time. I can also place it again and we'll hear the resonance build up once more. Um, note that if you are using the Ebo and need to remember which strings to put it on, it's useful to either mark the strings with a bit of chalk or a little sticker here just to speed up the process. In both my pieces, Sparrow Luchum and Rising Tide, there are two Ebos that are used. One is on the note E, just above middle C on the piano, and the next is on the G sharp or A flat below middle C. On many Steinway B models, there comes a little problem in that the position between the A flat and the G has a large gap in the strings. If you are on a piano with such a gap, there are some others where this occurs as well, um, I would suggest making a little cardboard foot that extends the um, foot so that it can reach the G natural string and allow the Ebo to be positioned in such a way that we don't get any rattling once the sustained pedal is released. Note here we'll get a chord. At the end of this video I'll give a little demo on what the foot could look like. Um, and if you are borrowing Ebos from me and I send them to you in the mail, I'll usually include one with a foot and then you can remove it if your performance piano doesn't need it. Some things to look out for. So in this formation, the Ebo is working properly. However, if I was to move the Ebo a little bit to the right, now you'll hear a buzzing that occurs because the Central, because the left rail of the Ebo is also on one of the E strings. Now, you should try to avoid this, and the best way to avoid that is to just rehearse the choreography of taking the Ebos on and off throughout the performance. Um, if this happens in performance, don't let it ruin the vibe of the whole thing. You know, just go with it. There are, of course, accidents that happen. But in an ideal situation, you would be able to just move the Ebo slightly to the left to correct the rattling sound. Within both Rising Tide and Sparrow Luchum, there are times when it, the, it is asked that the Ebos are removed from the piano. Um, if you have the time and the choreography to do this, please follow the instructions. The main purpose for this is that when an Ebo is activated, so for example on the E, this makes the seconds, the minor seconds around the central note sort of defunct for performance. So while the Ebo is resonating on all these strings, you'll notice the rattling of the hammer on the D sharp and the F. So when I need to use the notes around the central pillar of the Ebo string, I'll often ask that the Ebo gets removed very briefly and then you can play these notes just fine and then the Ebo can go back on the piano on the correct string. How does one use the Ebo and play a harmonic at the same time? Um, in both Rising Tide and Sparrow Luchum, especially towards the end of the piece, there are several instances in which the E string, um, we must hear the E an octave above as the harmonic. Um, and it's important to make sure that your Ebo placement is not covering that actual harmonic position and it is in a place where you have an easy reference point. So the first step is to make sure that you find the harmonic spot, which is right here. Um, so you have that in mind. And then I'm gonna depress the sustain pedal, hit the harmonic, and then the Ebo activates once more. Now, when I'm doing piano harmonics, and this is the case for the other harmonics in the rest of the piece, rather than choking the string, which does provide a really nice resonance point, I like to choke the string and then just upon the point of key contact with the hammer to release the fingers to allow the notes to actually speak more resonantly. So once again, notice the timbral difference between and with the release. The 
last note of the piece uses the D sharp that is currently rattling next to the Evo E. So I recommend just before playing the D sharp of the keys to remove the Evo, remembering that the resonance will continue for some time. So here we're gonna build up the resonance and then the last note of the piece. So here we're going to build up the resonance and in the last note of the piece, I remove the Evo, take off the damper pedal and then play the D sharp. Let's just talk about the F sharp harmonic that recurs throughout the piece. So here we have the F sharp on the piano resonated on this string, and we need to find the note that corresponds with the flat seven. So it'll be a little flatter than that, so we have to go over to the piano and find that harmonic. should sound like bells. For the scratch, there are two methods of doing this. The first is with the fingernails. You start slowly and then increase. Close the damper pedal now to show the second method. If you don't have strong enough fingernails, you can use a credit card with the same technique.